Hi, this is Deb Watson, and today we're going to do a red barn in a snowy landscape. For the written instructions, please go to my website, www.debwatson.org. I'm starting the sky with a mix of cerulean and cobalt blue. These are pretty colors to use in a snow scene because they lift easily. I start the sky at the top with a more saturated paint and I'm adding water to my brush as I come down the landscape so it'll be a little bit lighter. I'm going to do the tree wet on wet so I'm not too worried about the edges of the tree. On the side of the barn I want a far away looking landscape so I just mix a little brown right into the blue and I make it a little bit darker at the very bottom. Then I clean my brush, get a more pure burnt sienna to put on top of it, the barn, to make it far away trees. I tilt it just a bit to encourage it to blend. I'm working pretty fast and while this is all still wet, I'm using Perlin Green for my, far, for my tree on the side of the barn. Perlin Green is a really nice green for landscapes. It's almost black, but when mixed with yellow and other colors, it's very believable. I'm not too worried about any texture or anything at this point. I just want to get it all down on paper. The basic color of the barn is alizarin crimson red and because everything's still wet I have to leave a space between the edge of the barn and the other wet washes. I'm putting on my first wash of alizarin crimson. You can see I'm just doing washes at this point. I'm not worried about any of the detail. For the snow, I put some of the cerulean and cobalt mixture at the bottom, leaving a white stripe of pure white for the snow. But then I put a little bit of water to soften up that edge. The tree is starting to look really flat, so I take my brush, dip it in clean water, and tap it on my finger to make some spatters to give it some texture. Once it's completely dry, I can start my second layer. The side of the barn that's in shadow, I mix the red with the green to make a very dark shadowy red color. I try to vary the color and intensity even in the shadow. And I do this by dipping the brush in the dark mixture and then dipping the brush in the red paint and let it blend together a bit. I also want a shadow under that eave. So I put that on and we'll see how it does. The sunlight side of the barn is fairly light red and I just paint it light red once again. There's also a shadow from the tree on the side of the barn. And for that I once again go to my red and green mixture to put in the shadow side. And since my shadow under the eaves wimped out, I put that in again and put the real fine line that goes underneath the snow. I take a brush with clean water to go over the drying wash to suggest some board texture. But my brush catches on the dark color and pulls it up so I soften that back up just a touch. Going back to the tree for its second wash. I'll spend a lot of time on this tree because I want to suggest some texture without being too photorealistic or too much time on it. I start with very thick Perlin green paint and I get a nice layer of that going. And then I dip my brush in the yellow. And I put some yellow in the wet wash. 
and then I start to just kind of alternate the dark green with the green yellow just enough that it'll have some texture when it dries and not look totally flat. There's a lot of ways you can make texture with bushes and this is just one of them. As I come down towards the bottom I want a little change in color. So I get some cobalt blue and mix that in with my dark green. You can mix a lot of colors in a dark wash. It'll still dry dark, but it'll add a lot of subtle interest. I want it a little lighter and brighter as it comes towards the barn. So I add a little bit more yellow for this smaller part of the bushes. I also want your eye to jump over to the other side. So I put a little bit of background with some of the green that was still on my brush. And your eye will make the leap from one side of the barn to the other. The snow on the barn looks pretty stark if you leave it completely white. So I put a hint of blue and pull it down a bit. I still want more texture in that tree so I sprinkle it with salt and dot it with some clean water. Now that it's dry, we can put in the finishing detail. I'm using the Pro White to put a fence in front of the barn. Trying to be very careful and just copy what was there. I also put a little white on the rooftop and soften up the bottom edge of the snow with a little more white. Pro White has a bluish cast so it works well with snow scenes. The side of the barn could still have a little darker shadow under the eave and a little darker shadow to separate the side from the front of the barn. I put the shadow on and put water on one side. Going back to my white, I put a little snow on the opposite side of the barn roof and then tap some snow falling onto my landscape. This is really simple. I think even a beginner can handle this without a problem. And I hope that yours turns out well also. Keep painting!